Hey everyone, welcome to 996 The Howl for the Uninitiated. This is an unedited YouTube vlog discussing everything Arizona Coyotes. Once again, another trade. Chaika, I, I'm telling you guys, this Chaika does not sleep. Just, just something about him. Um, just continuing to retool, continuing to look at his roster, even through the summer. And another trade with the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's just jump right into this one. Marcus Kruger, short-lived tenure at in Arizona with the Coyotes, traded with Entwistle, Andrew Campbell, Melita, Maletta. Basically, two AHLers, Kruger, a fifth-round draft pick, and Marcus Entwistle, who's still in the OHL, can't play in the AHL this upcoming season either. So he's a long-term prospect that the Coyotes had. I think they drafted him last draft in 2017 in Chicago. And, yeah. So I'm going to break this down a little bit. Um, this is my way of thinking. We basically traded Jordan Martinuk and a fourth-round pick for two-thirds Vinny Henestrosa, Jordan Osterley, and Marion Hose's contract dump. So we literally traded a career fourth liner, no disrespect to Marinook, great hardworking guy, penalty killer. He doesn't score, doesn't provide offense, just a stable fourth liner. Hope he stays in the league for 20 years. No disrespect to, to my boy Marty. But we traded Marinook for two thirds, Henestrosa, Osterley, uh, a, and a contract dump. So. That's pretty good. Uh, great moves by Chaika. If you don't want to look at it like that, we treated Marcus Kruger, who is a fourth-line centerman, penalty killer, veteran, who's won two cups with Chicago, who found himself out of the lineup with the signing of Brad Richardson. I assume the writing was on the wall that with the signing of Kruger, Richardson would be out. But basically, Chaika used that as a bargaining chip and negotiation tactic to tell Richardson, hey, we got a backup plan if you don't sign. Richardson decides, for, decides to sign for less money and then goes in trades and negotiation bargaining chip for even more players. So Chaika is just, he's playing some type of, some type of game. Some people would say 3D chess. 40 chess, maybe 60 checkers. We don't know yet. But what a trade. Um, Vinny Henestrosa, his first name is Vinny, not Vincent. So that kind of shocked me. His first name is actually Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. So uh, Vinny, 24 years old. We'll talk about that later. 24 years old, offensively minded, shoots right-handedly which apparently the Coyotes don't have much of they don't have much right shot players um, he had seven goals 18 assists so 26 points in 50 games last season with Chicago similar numbers to declare who put up 23 points in 56 games played so he seems like another declare type player fast speedy more of a two-way game than De Duclair and hopefully without the rumored attitude problems that apparently seems to follow Duclair around. So we get an offensively bottom six winger in Henestrosa. Jordan Osterley is a defenseman, puck moving defenseman, offensively minded, had 15 points, five goals last season. He's going to be competing for that 6th spot, for that 7th D-man spot. And there is so much, ladies and gentlemen, there is so much competition for this 7th, this 7th, <laughs> this 7th spot on this decor. Um, Austria was playing 20 minutes a game for the Blackhawks. I think he was on his 2nd pairing with Connor Murphy. Connor Murphy! Um... But there is Osterly, Labushkin, which is that Russian free agent Chaika signed, Mermis, Murphy, and Capo Bianco 
just competing for that seventh D-man spot. Just to compete, to sit in the press box, there's competition for that. I mean, there is so much internal competition on this team. It's it's insane. Just if anyone falters on this roster, there is someone there to pick up pick up the slack and take their spot. I don't even think Panic is guaranteed first line winger anymore. Just if anyone has a bad week, it's over for them. Not over, but they'll get demoted quick. I mean, guys who are in a in a shaky spot would be Kanadin, Fisher, and Ponick, to be honest. If Ponick falters, Perlini's there, Grabner's there, even Henestros at 24 years old. These guys got potential. These guys are fast, young. They they want to take the next step. I didn't mention Oshley is also 26 years old. So if you look at the recent acquisitions Chuck has made, Galchenyuk, Osterley, Henestroza, Stepan is 28, so he's on the high end. But a lot of these guys are mid-20s, just ready to break out. And I think that's what Chaika wants. He wants players from like 22 years old to 30, where they've shown improvements and there's potential there for them to break out. And hopefully they break out on the Coyotes team. And they could help the young guys in Dvorak, Fisher, Perlini, and Strom. We don't have too many young, like really young guys anymore. Um, those guys that I mentioned plus Keller are young guys. I don't know what age Panic is. He might be 30. He's been in the league for a while. But like I said, he likes to get that middle middle 20 age um, approaching 30. So they're stable NHL players who have room to grow. Um, what else? People say the Hosa cap hit is going to hurt the Coyotes, which is false. It may only hurt them this season because they still have Bolin's contract. They got to pay off. So this year they have $10 million in cap space. Bolin's contract's $5.8 million. Host is $5.2. So after this season, Bolin comes off the books and will have $15 million in cap space um, entering next offseason and the offseasons after that, pending that the cap space doesn't rise. So that's 15 base. And then free agents, we have to sign not many. This is Ponick's last, last season. I doubt Chaka re-signs him. So that's two, another $2.8 million off. So that increases it to 17, almost $18 million cap space. And then we just need to resign um, Dvorak, Perlini, Kraus, and Chikrin next off season, which neither of them are expecting huge payouts. I mean, Domi got three and a half million and I liked Domi more than all those players and Domi's better than most of those. Chikrin might ask for more, but he's he's got a lot of injuries, so I don't know about that. But Dvorak Perlini, probably get around three million, if, if that. I think Dvorak might even get two and a half. Perlini, if he scores another 18 to 23 goals, could argue for four million. But no one's looking for a payday until the end of 2020, where Galchenyuk, Strom, and Keller will be will be free agents. Strom will probably get another three and a half, unless he explodes. Keller will probably get five to six. Galchenyuk, if he fits well into the system, will get six. And then after that, Hosa's contract's gone. So we have three more years of Hosa. One more year of Boland. Once Boland comes off, to frees up five point eight million dollars. No, no big free agents to sign aside from Keller. I would say Keller maybe Chikrin. So I mean, Chaika knows this. He's looking in the future. He's like, hey, we can afford two more years of a five million cap hit. Coyotes actually do not pay cash for Hosa, other than two hundred thousand dollars for one more year. I think. Or three more years, probably 200k for three more years. So doesn't really hurt the Coyotes much. Obviously, this prevents them from getting like a 10 million dollar player, but I don't see any 10 million dollar player available soon. Maybe Sagan, but you know, Coyotes never really go for that 10 million plus elite player. Chaika, I think, wants to grow one as opposed to acquire one. But I don't think the cap hit hurts the Coyotes much. It's just a, an asset Chaika uses. 
he knew he wasn't gonna spend any more money, so might as well use that cap space to get more assets. We ba- we traded Martinuk for two offensively minded players and two third round picks. I think that's brilliant. Uh, anyone who says otherwise needs to look deep down into the trade mechanics and see what he actually did. We gave up three career AHLers in Campbell, Maletta, and who was the other one? I forget. <laughs> but uh, there was three or two AHLers and Entwistle. Entwistle is the biggest question mark. But I really don't see Entwistle being a top six guy. He was never going to be a top six guy. I just liked him because he was a Coyotes prospect. He was more noticeable than other prospects. But he was never going to be a top six guy. Just probably another Henestroza. So, I mean, yeah, Chaika. Chaika's a madman. I love the way he handles his assets. If he's not going to re-sign a player, he'll trade him for picks. He wasn't going to re-sign Marnuk, so he goes and gets Kruger and a third-round pick. Wasn't going to use Kruger because he re-signs Richardson, too many centermen. So trades Kruger for another third-round pick. Then, like I said, you get a bottom six, speedy young forward, and a puck-moving, offensively-minded defenseman who's going to compete for that seventh or sixth D-man spot. So a lot of competition. I have no idea what these lines are going to look like. Absolutely no idea what these forward lines are going to look like. Defense is pretty sad, pretty much the same as last year with the seventh D-man being a question mark. But I have no idea who's playing wing, no idea who's playing center. So a lot of pondering, a lot of thinking and analyzing for the next three months. Yeah, that's it for me. Another trade, Chike is a monster. Uh, More assets, more picks. More young players hoping to break out. And yeah, it's exciting. It really is. Chaika gives me a lot of things to talk about. Coyotes have made the most trades in the past two years. So that's fact. So yeah, that's it for me. Thank for watching. Thank for your support.